Purdy still continues to to I don't amaze might be too strong, but you look at him and you're just starting to get used to it. And then it shows up in numbers, right? The the touchdowns versus the picks are minimal. The rating is incredible. Like I'm starting to think like. You know what? Maybe we shouldn't think of this as a guy who got uh, drafted uh, as, as the last pick in the draft. Maybe we should think uh, we should look at this guy as someone who wasn't evaluated very well coming out of college, and he should have been drafted high. Maybe not. I mean, not first, second, third round, but should have been drafted higher than he was. He drafted. They're drafting him on his measurables. And there's nothing much more frustrating as a player, especially a quarterback, when we've talked about the force. We've talked about this this unknowable thing. It's this guile, this sense of spatial awareness, the ability to have 21 other people running around in a tight space. And it doesn't bother you. Like, and people, 80,000 people screaming, doesn't bother me. Bigger games, doesn't bother me. Like, I just might, when the adrenaline goes up, most human beings start to sweat and lose themselves. Their mind gets smaller. And some people calm down. Some people's minds expand as things get crazier. And the thing that they didn't know when they drafted him was that he had this special ability that is indescribable, that he had proved at college, but because it was at Iowa State, it just it just they, it ran under the radar because he was shorter, because he didn't have the strongest arm. And because in the NFL today, that's all that's the only thing they can measure. They have such difficulty measuring the stuff that really matters to understand how to get the ball in the right spot and, and understand the, the spatial awareness and all the stress. And, 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 and there's very few humans that respond to adrenaline and their body starts to calm. And, and the greatest players in the world all have this genetic ability. As things get crazier, they, their body calms down. And it's just it's the opposite of most human beings, and most human beings kind of wonder. And that's why most human beings can't judge that quality because it's counterintuitive. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. What do you mean his, by his heart, his heart rate goes down when the scream and they're screaming in a two-minute drill? Yeah, that's just how they respond. And that's why if you said, you know, based on the ability to quarterback, he had a first-round draft choice on the ability to quarterback. The thing that he didn't have was the strongest arm, the biggest body, the straight, the speed, all the stuff that everybody's looking for for all these big, you know, killers out in the world. And that'll always – we said this last week. It will be a limitation for Brock. It's a limitation that's not going to change. He's not going to grow four more inches. He's not going to get faster. He's got plenty of quickness. His arm's not going to be able to – he's not going to be able to throw it 80 yards. It's not going to happen. What, what did he tell you a couple of – maybe preseason. He says, I'll figure it out. What he's saying is, I have such – I'll figure out how to make up for those deficiencies. Don't worry about it. And I, I immediately said, go on with your bad self, bro, because, <laughs> yeah, because I truly believe – I believe that that's true. I believe yeah. that he will figure it out. And, the, and you said it, Tom. Not many turnovers, you know, but not 70 touchdowns either. It's like great quarterbacking within limit with some physical limitations every week. Great quarterbacking. And you saw when they blitzed him a ton against the Giants. Yep. Yeah, they got him a couple times. In fact, he almost threw two picks early, right? Just yeah. like, yep. all right. Yeah. And then and then what happens? He doesn't come back and throw two more or two more. You know, if he throws, he's like, OK, yep. I'll back up a little bit and rip one to George Kittle. And then I'll hit you on the sidelines like he's that kind of a guy. Like, yeah, you might punch me in the nose. You might even get a little blood. But I'm not going to – you're not going to pound me into submission because I'm coming back because I have this – I don't know. I can't guy all you guys. Help me out with the words. I mean, it's all that stuff. He's got yeah. moxie, kid. Mo- He's moxie. got moxie. Moxie, yeah. moxie. All that stuff that you want to – all yep. those words that have, no, you know, no true meaning, but you understand what you're trying to say. Yep. And, Tom, you knew this in basketball. Certain guys got it. They just understand the game, the spatial awareness. They never got overwhelmed. They weren't the biggest moments. They weren't freaking out. And that's what – that's look, when uh, I told you the team chose Brock because when he played, he makes them feel calmer. He makes them feel more confident. And that's like we want – every quarterback prays that they can make their teammates feel that way. Yeah, here's one for you. Uh, so uh, I've heard this forever, uh, that it, when it gets really stressful – the best players are able to lower their heart rate. And I've, here's what I've always thought. Let me ask you this. Is it they lower their heart rate or their heart rate stays the same and everyone else stays goes the up? same? That's fair. It's not, doesn't go down. I mean, you don't like, you're not meditating. 
but you're but you're not it, but it doesn't go up it doesn't go up but i give i mean when i was with joe joe was amazing and i used to sit there like literally i was just you know the biggest moments or the craziest games or the i don't know if you remember we went to the eagles with reggie white and jerome yep. brown and it was it was a big game and it was a big deal and they had a ferocious defense and and you know he you know instead of all the craziness about the game caused you to do some some things he just he did his job he read the defense he read the blitz he threw the post and then jerry Rice runs for any yard touchdown and then he'd come back and you know he'd look at this sheet and you know i'm kind of watching him and learning and he didn't he didn't he didn't break he's like well we'll just go out there and if they blitz I'll, I'll i know what to do and he just it's almost like you just do your job without all the adrenaline you don't you don't lose your mind doesn't your mind doesn't shrink Yep. Because when your adrenaline goes up, your mind shrinks, and you know, in your in your eyes glaze, and all that stuff yep. that happens. How many times come to the sideline? That, and honestly, even in, even a lot of pro quarterbacks, a coach would say, "What did you see?" And like, if he was honest, like lie detector, I don't know. I I can't see anything. My I'm I, it's all just a big blur. Where I I just that's what I tried to do and learn from Joe was that ability to just stay steady, do your job, make the reads. Don't get overwhelmed in anything that happens. And then they'll – because defenses get overwrought. Defenses, mm-hmm. especially in the third and fourth quarter, the plan that they had, everything kind of goes to hell, and then they're just kind of just – they're scrambling around. They don't fake you out anymore, and you can just take advantage by doing your job. What were your thoughts on what Steve Young had to say about 49ers quarterback Brock Purdy? Let me know what you guys think about what Steve had to say in the comments below. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe. For more updates.